In the beginning, there was a word. That is, it was an email. They wrote to me from Baren TV production. Later, I found out that it was the first preschool Arab television program for children ages 3 to 6. We called it Al Jazeera at work. It was easier to remember and were not far from truth because Al Jazeera owned the channel. In addition to the fact that they liked our puppets, they also wanted to know if we would also be willing to make some puppets for their 30 part TV series. There was supposed to be one European fairy tale in each part. Why wouldn't we be willing to participate in this project, right? So I replied something along those lines, like yes, and how many, and what kind of puppets they wanted, and by when. Well, the answer surprised me a little. They wanted 20 wooden marionettes, 40 to 60 centimeters in size, with opening mouth. And they said that it would be filmed in January. If the email had come in June, it would have been fine. But the email I am talking about came in early December. I am an optimist. But in this case, I couldn't give them a clear answer. Cool, let's go. In the end, we agreed that filming would start in April and that we would make 29 puppets and repair two puppets from the previous filming. That would be quite possible. First, however, we had to make one test puppet to convince them that we were not just talking about making puppets they gave us nice compliments about, but that we could really make them. As I found out later, it was not all that pointless. The puppets from the previous season were made in such a way that the TV production approached one person and asked him to make the puppets in the same clink time as was initially asked us to do. The other person did it as they asked, and the puppet looked like it. I completely understood it, because it couldn't have been done better under such pressure. It was not until we made the puppet that it turned out that this guy didn't pass the approval screen and the management decided that he wouldn't participate in the shoot. Later he became a decent banker and went out into the world. The turtle was more fortunate and was approved. So we made it. In addition to making the turtle look the way it was drawn, there was a requirement for it to hang on four meters strings. Yes, strings four meters long. That's how I found out that the ceiling in my workshop is only three meters, 60 centimeters high. And hell, how to hang it? I took the turtle outside, where I dropped it down the stairwell to the floor below and ran up and down and up and down again until the puppet was properly hung on all ten strings. Then we carefully packed it and sent it to Qatar, so that only there where they would tangle all those long threads properly. The production company revealed that to me only when I was already in Doha. But the main thing was that we got a blessing and could start making the remaining 29 puppets. All would have been nice if it was not the end of February already, and it was confirmed that I will fly out to Qatar on April 6 to participate in shooting. The new puppet designs arrived in mid-March along with the puppets from the previous season for repair. And we were basically at the same stage as when the December email came. There was not even a month left until the start of shooting. So I contacted all available carvers to see if they would like to participate in the production of puppets. Some just had the desire, but no time. And some, luckily, had both. In the end there were eight of us and then it zipped along. 
It was not just about carving the puppets, but also about painting them. They were supposed to be hanged on Qatar. Fortunately, because as it turned out later, the puppeteer ramp ended up being higher than expected, and the strings had to be 4 meters, 30 centimeters long. I really can't imagine how I would have felt if I had hung all the puppets on our staircase at the original 4 meter length, and then, with a bleeding heart, hung them again because of 30 important centimeters. We only had to repair the giant puppet. There was no need to make a new one, but we had to make it lighter. It was so heavy that it was practically impossible to use it in the performance. So Adam cut it open and hollowed it out. Then we put it back together, repainted it and this handsome man could look forward to returning home. I just sanded the bird all over to remove the visible saw marks and gave it a new coat of paint. And my nine-year-old daughter fell madly in love with it. On April 6, I took about a third of the puppets with me to Qatar. A crocodile who had no idea what fate awaited him in Qatar. Neither did we. It's a longer story, and I will tell you about it in one of the next installments. We didn't know anything here. Frogs were my favorite puppets. Zdar devised an amazing mechanism to make their jump look completely natural. Unfortunately, I didn't think to film it. Sorry. Traveling along with me were also four human characters, a mouse, a crow and a hen. And only one ticket was enough for our whole company. The remaining puppets were finished in Prague and were sent later. I sent instruction to my wonderful and reliable liaison Carolina. In return, she sent me funny messages about how the work was going on. One carver got tendinitis from the fast work pace. Others were just a little on the verge of collapse. But everything went basically according to plan. After three weeks of filming, a shipment of additional puppets arrived. It only occurred to me when it was too late that they could have discreetly packed at least one bottle of Slivovica with them. So I was severely abstinent and only sentimentally recalled how we had fun working in Prague. The puppets received the well-deserved admiration. And how did things go on during shooting in Doha? If you are interested, you will see it in the continued Qatar story on my channel.